Hi, friends. Welcome to my May favorites right smack in the middle of June. This is coming at you a little late, but it's okay. Still wanted to film and share a couple of my faves for the month of May. Some are not necessarily new products. They are products that I have been using, but now using heavily because of the season. I also wanted to share some skincare updates as I've been using these products for quite some time and wanted to give you some insight on how they've been going. Why don't we start there actually? Let me grab my empties to kick this off. I have a relationship with Peach and Lee where they reach out to me and asking if I wanted any of the new product releases and they have been sending me those products with their new releases. And with that, I had kindly asked them if they could re-up me on certain products, specifically the Glass Skin Serum. I bought these two bottles in their last sale or sale before, the jumbo size and the standard size. I finished both. I can't tell you what the Glass Skin Serum does specifically to my skin. I can tell you, however, it's just a lovely serum to apply. It's fragrance-free. I love how my skin feels. It has this bouncy texture about it, very much glass skin as the product name implies. I think it does contribute overall to brightening, evening of tone. It's the texture for me, fam. You know, even if I have my blemishes still showing through from post hyperpigmentation woes, at least the texture around the skin or the skin itself is smooth. And I do think the glass skin serum helps with that. So I did ask them for another bottle. So I got one here, fresh and new. They also sent me a new bottle of the glass skin water gel moisturizer which i have been using now instead of the allies of skin peptide moisturizer which i i only use at night because i am on a two-month replenishment subscription so i don't want this to run out after a month that's why i had cut down the frequency so i do apply this on top of the allies of skin vitamin c 20 percent serum this is my third bottle i began using this product december of 2022 when and I signed up, they were having a sale, so I signed up for the subscription, and I have been using this vitamin C ever since. Oh my gosh, we're looking at six months of consistent use from this vitamin C serum. I absolutely love it. At first, I was unsure because the texture is super balmy and thick because using this for the first time, it had an unusual balmy, sticky texture. And now thinking about it, I think I use this before, no, I first used this, I believe the fall, when Beautylish reached out to share about their gift card event, because I think they hold it both spring and fall. And last year I requested 35% serum, which is more of a dry oil consistency. This is much more balmy in nature. And I remember using this, I'm like, uh oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. But I read instructions about it where it is recommended that you apply it on your skin. It's still damp from your essence, toner, or serum. I've been doing that step and it does help the vitamin C serum blend uh, quicker and not doesn't feel as tacky. So, okay, more than six months I've been using this vitamin C consistently and I do feel it helps with evening out the hyperpigmentation and just overall smoothing out my skin tone. I will now use this, I guess for the first time since I started using this last fall, going into the summertime, don't know how the balmy texture will feel in humid weather, right? I think it's gonna be fine only because I'm just used to it by now. I know how to tackle the tack. <laughs> and applying the glass skin moisturizer on top, I think helps with my skin not feeling overwhelmed with product. It's either the glass skin moisturizer or the refer light cream gel moisturizer or the light hydration cream, which has more of like a gel cream look to it. This is the refer here, very light in consistency and the glass skin moisturizer looks like a gel compared to the refer. So that looks like a straight on gel and it feels like that when applying. Very cooling, refreshing, and I think a fitting product, especially now heading into, or now we're in the summer season and being in the Northeast, it could get a little humid and hot. 
up in here. And the peptide moisturizer I use at night. It is recommended that you use morning and night, but then I would have to bump up the frequency to a month. But the problem is you cannot choose different frequencies for different products. If it's two products, they have to either be both one month or both two months, which is annoying because I run out of the peptide moisturizer faster than the vitamin C. Since I'm only using the vitamin C once a day, the peptide moisturizer twice a day, it runs out faster. So that's why I just bumped it down to night use. And I still think it positively contributes to how smooth my skin has been looking. The peptides are doing some. This is Allies of Skins, one of their best sellers. I mean, every time, you know, they tout this product as being the holy grail out of the entire brand. And I understand why. This is an incredible product. It is my second tube, I believe. Is it my third? Second or third tube, I can't recall. I signed up, I am a subscriber. This moisturizer is crazy amazing. Love that it is still in my routine and I'm happily using it with the glass skin moisturizer or the refer moisturizer, glass skin or refer moisturizer in the morning, allies of skin at night. Speaking of night, I also wanted to share that Surat was kind enough to send me their Hinoki cleansing oil. This is expensive. I don't know if I will, well, no, I would not have bought this if it wasn't sent to me, only because I do have the peach and lily cleansing oil. This is my second bottle. I have the other bottle at Bay's house. It is a lovely product. The Hinoki scent, I feel, translates better in the cleansing oil than it does in the facial mist. They also sent me the facial mist. These products release together. The Hinoki scent, is a little more woodsy in the in the facial mist and because it stays on your face i'm not a fan of how it smells after the mist settles and i'm just very picky with fragrance in general i typically don't like it in any of my products but i do enjoy it in the cleansing serum and this texture has a lot more slip to it than the peach and lily so it's, it's hard to see but that's where i have it on my hand i could do the other hand just so you can see the comparison. So again, this has, is a lot more liquidy than the peach and lily, where the peach and lily is a lot more viscous. And you could probably detect that just by how the liquid moves in the bottle. See, there's, there's a little more watery element to it and the peach and lily moves more slowly. Something I realized too, when dealing with a more viscous cleansing oil, and I fell victim to this, is you have to spend time in emulsifying the oil with the water. At times, I was in a rush, and I don't know why. I mean, this was before bed. I mean, way before bed, I would wash my face. I have plenty of time to do this. Ensuring you use enough water to create that emulsified, milky texture on your skin, and then you rinse it, versus just wetting, swirling, and then try to rinse off. It might feel like you have an oily residue left behind because I didn't take the time to properly emulsify all of the oil on my face. Like turn off the faucet and take some time to get that milky emulsion around your skin and then rinse off. And when I do that, I don't feel there's much of a residue left behind. But with the Surat, that happens a lot faster than with the peach and lily. So that is my comparison. Although this is a lovely product, I might not buy this. I, who am I kidding? I will not buy this when I'm done with it. This is the one I keep at Bay's house. It's stationed at his bathroom sink because um, it's a luxurious feeling moment during my nighttime skincare routine, but it is expensive. And for something that gets washed down the drain, for me, it's not sustainable. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Surat for sending this to me as a gift, but I personally don't spend a ton of money on cleansers, whether it's an, an oil cleanser or a wash, just because it doesn't stay on the skin very long. But I do understand if you're one that prioritizes just more of that ritualistic vibe during your skincare routine, and you want to use a product that's luxurious feeling, that smells great, it might cost you, but that's up to you. I do like it though. We'll probably won't buy another bottle when this is done. That's why I'm taking my time using it. And I mentioned, I think, in my previous Get Ready With Me that I wasn't a fan of the Shiseido Anessa sunscreen. So I went right back to my Nivea. This super water gel uh, sunscreen, I can't find the word, 
is amazing. It feels like a water gel. This consistency is absolutely perfect when it comes to not leaving any type of cast behind, but I don't know. So I'm not updated on the whole hoopla with Asian sunscreens and how they're not really doing their sunscreen thing. And you know, the filters are not really working. So if you have any updates on that fam, if you're more uh, familiar with that story, please let us know down below. But I'm using it, it says SPF 50. Who knows if it's really SPF 50? Who knows if it's really blocking the sun like it says supposed to. But in terms of texture, this stuff is unparalleled. It absorbs well, it doesn't leave my skin feeling tacky, sticky. I don't smell like that sunscreen scent, which I cannot stand, like the copper tone scent, oh my God, on my face, no. This is absolutely perfect. Alongside the aqua gel, I forgot the brand that that's under, but any type of like water gel consistencies in the Japanese Korean sunscreen category, sign me up. I'm right there. And moving into makeup now, I had to share my top picks for complexion for May, and that was bouncing between the House Labs and the Danessa Myricks Blurring Skin Balm. This is in shade six. I also have this in shade five and seven. The House Lab Skin Tech is in medium cool 330. I love both, man, and I'm happy that I stuck to my guns during the Sephora Spring Savings event that was held uh, two months ago, where I was looking at the Bosma Foundation Stick and the Laura Mercier Flawless Skin Foundation. I had been using the Laura Mercier because I had samples. I do like that foundation, but when using the House Labs and the Danessa back and forth, using them together, I was like, I'm good. I don't need new foundation at all. The Skin Tech, first of all, Medium Cool 330 is the perfect summer shade for me because it does have that golden olive undertone, but it's still neutral, but it doesn't make me look green, which some uh, olive foundations in the past have. So it gives me like that tan look without looking artificial, like too yellow, too orange in undertone. And the Danessa Blurring Balm in terms of its uh, capabilities to combat excess oil and sweat, leaving your skin looking more refreshed during the day when it is exposed to humidity and hotter temperatures. And the, the color itself is fantastic. It feels lightweight on the skin, is easy to apply. I actually applied both the Skin Tech and Blurring Balm today, the Skin Tech around the perimeters of my face, and then I took shade number five on the center of my face where I typically will produce more oil. I thought that was a fitting combination considering that the skin tech is a little warmer, more tanny. So that happens on the outer perimeters. And then I slapped on the lighter shade on the center. And I think that definitely balanced my complexion out and both products together have been looking flawless on my skin, especially after the skincare regimen that I had outlined before between the vitamin C serum, the peptide moisturizer, the glass skin moisturizer, the glass, the skin's been looking good, okay? If I could keep my fingers off, it could do its thing. And even with the little pimples that sometimes pop up because that's life, if I just leave them things alone and let them heal on their own, it's not even a big deal. Everything else going on around still looks smooth and flawless, especially like when I've been editing, my videos and I see my skin is like, look what happens when you keep your hands off, young lady. So I will happily keep using these products throughout the summertime. And of course, have been using my Taunt Edol Lancome concealer. I use medium neutral today. I do have medium cool. Yes, I do have my eye on the Natasha Denona concealer and I became an affiliate with Natasha Denona Magam. Alicia 15, if you want a discount on any of your purchases. I forgot which color I had on my radar for the Natasha Denona concealer. It's appealing, it looks beautiful, but I'm trying to use more of my Lancome first. You know what I'm saying? And then I'll buy the Natasha Denona down the line, perhaps. I'm very happy though with the Lancome. I love what it's doing. I love the tone of it. It's concealing and brightening. It's doing all the things, checking off all the boxes. Now, in terms of what I did today for the cheeks, I did apply Danessa's Blurring Balm Flushed in the shade Jubilee because the Pat McGrath Legendary Glow Color Balm Blush Sticks, technically they do not belong in this video. So you will see them in the June video. <laughs> 
at the end of July, probably. So I wanted to stay consistent with, you know, May favorites. I applied Jubilee here on the footage and a brush that I didn't realize came in clutch with not only the color bomb application, but also is perfect with the blurring bomb flushed application is the Pat McGrath Labs Divine Blush Brush. This is a synthetic brush, but it's long bristled and tapered. And when you tap off the product from the pan itself, it lays it on seamlessly and evenly. Whereas depending on another brush, like for instance, the Spectrum uh, Katie Jane Hughes collaboration, this also could be a good one, but it's a little spotty. This one picks it up more evenly, which is what I found also with the Glow Color Balm. So this brush is one of my faves now for cream blush application. You're like, Alicia, it's a synthetic brush. You are a <laughs> food a you know what? Absolutely, I do rely on natural hair brushes more for powder application, but when it comes to creams and liquids, you know, synthetic comes in just from a more practical standpoint in that you could wash them more often. And since they're synthetic, they don't pick up as much product, which allows a little more control on the blend, right? So I will be using this also with Bellini, but I applied Jubilee today, which is the rose terracotta shade from the Blurring Blom flushed line. And then I went in with, this is an oldie, the Pillow Talk Multi Glow Beautifying All Over Glow Highlighter in Dream Light. So I wanted something softer as my highlight, primarily used the middle colors for lower here on the cheekbones and went in with the lighter higher on the cheekbones. And I thought that created a lovely gradient, right? These colors I thought corresponded well with Jubilee having that lower on the cheeks for a little bit of glow there and the lighter shade higher on the cheekbones to create more light and dimension. So this is a great product. And although it's not super shiny, I think subtle enough to create that highlight effect without overwhelming my cheeks and still having Jubilee as the main stage shade. And of course I have been loving the heck out of Pat's Divine Bronzer, my most recent purchase. I think I bought this, it was during, I think it was during the spring event, uh, Bronze Divinity, the terracotta shade, but I thought it would be fun to use another bronzer for a uh, May favorite, the Charlotte Tilbury, darling, the airbrush bronzer. Remember this? I applied this in the tan shade today, and this will lead us now into one of my favorite brush picks for May, and that is the Ehoro Maiko Limited Edition brush. Look at the lacquer painting on the handle. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love that it's on the shorter side, but you have this beautiful illustration still. Only 100 brushes made. Gray Squirrel. And the reason why I wanted Gray Squirrel with the Charlotte bronzer was because it's not going to pick up as much as a goat hair brush because tan could look a little heavy on me if I use a goat hair brush or one that just applies too much product but using a gray squirrel brush will pick up just the right amount and the color payoff will be right where I need it to be not too much not too little and also the shape of the brush I think envelops my hollows and apples of cheeks at the same time where I feel appropriate for bronzer application incredibly soft and again and the shoulder handle just makes it easy to feel where I'm going on my face. So the self-application, I feel a lot easier in that manner. And I also use the Koyudo, I think this was their holiday edition brush with the, the bull on the bottom. This is an angle type brush, also gray squirrel. If you want a little more precision in your powder application, just nudging the wedge here into the hollows of the cheeks. But I absolutely adore the Maiko brush right? I think it's the perfect size. Yes, you can use this for all over powder application, which I have, whether it's Pat McGrath's loose powder or the Shiseido Synchro Silk Powder. Just taking it all over, it's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. And I am working on a Fude powder brush video. That's going to be... That's going to be a long one because I have so many powder brush favorites, fam. Just you wait. That video is going to be something. So that is for the complexion. And if you're wondering what I have on the eyes, the new ABH Cosmo eyeshadow palette that I do not have on the eyes, I wanted to feature Nouveau. Because although Cosmo's looks beautiful, 
I saw Patty's video, of course. I, you know, had to see my girl apply it and, and do her thing. The thing with Cosmos, I feel, this is just my assumption that it will look too frosty on me. And I understand the appeal with those multi-chromes and high shine shades, right? I have those shades in my collection. I adore them. But with Nouveau, I feel that whimsical quality still exists but there's more of a cohesive story in this palette versus Cosmos. Cosmos, I feel, is more of a supplementary palette. It's like applying all the accent shades together versus using the accent shades only just for those accent moments. You got the accent moments in here, but you have the earthiness still present in the color story. Like Lily is beautiful, whether on the lid or as an accent shade, right? I applied it here on the lower lash line. Why don't I go through the B-roll because I filmed myself applying these shadows in case you were wondering. I had to pull out an oldie, the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in Verushka. My goodness, I know this product is old, okay? <laughs> it doesn't smell, it, it didn't get hard on me. It, she's still good, all right? So we're gonna use Verushka. I'm not entirely sure if that's still, is that still in the lineup? I feel like, like this is like a vault shade. So I wanted to apply Verushka to set up the look because I was eyeing hope this beautiful desaturated olive from Nouveau. So after I applied Verushka, I went in with Metro, the more coppery clay matte from Nouveau. And I whisked that through the crease and I know it looks very contrasting, but this was the setup I wanted. And one of the reasons why I love, I love this palette cause you got these warmer mattes here even with Liberty, you got the olive matte, but the more grungier bronzes and olives, it just, it, it works. I don't know how, but it works. And then I popped in Wisteria. Wisteria as an inner corner highlight, lower inner lash line pop, even on the lid if you want it more of a pastel moment. But Wisteria, this lavender hue shade as highlight, I just think wonderful. And then I followed with Hope. Hope is the desaturated olive metallic pat it on top of Verushka. Verushka just set it up beautifully well. So it, it had that similar olive tone, but then applying Hope on top, I feel reinforced the color, but even heightened the payoff at the same time. And it just stuck so well. I just tapped this shadow on and it stayed beautifully. Then I decided to whisk a little bit of Liberty on the outer lid to envelop a bit of Hope so it could have a smoother gradient from Liberty into Metro. Took a little bit of Fleur on the edges of Metro just to get that blend a little more blurred and had a, a smoother gradient closer to the, to the brow. Lily on the lower lash line because this shade is just gorgeous. It's duochrome, so it has that rosewood base with that teal reflect. Kind of reminds me of Plantasia from Yucca, which will be in the June video, 100%. Except Lily has a stronger rosewood base. You see here, so if I turn my arm here, you can see that more prominent rosewood base. And when I put it to the light, that's where you can see more of that pearl reflect. Maybe I'll get Cosmos down the line if it goes on sale, but I'm not in a rush and I don't have any, I don't have much FOMO about it. With Nouveau and Rose Metals, Rose Metals is right up my alley. I love those shades, those more burnt warmer mattes with the grungier metal shades as rose metal implies, the, the coppers and the bronzes and zzz. I love that color story as well as Nouveau, I still do. So I wanted to pop this out. If you're wondering what my thoughts are about Cosmos, if I was getting it, I'm not gonna get it right now. I'm very happy with what ABH has released thus far. And who knows if I swatched it in store and I totally get seduced, that that is a possibility. But from seeing the looks I have already using Cosmos, I don't want that much frostiness on my lids. I just don't think it translates as well, or it does look pretty, but I just feel, and listen, this is just me, okay? You apply whatever you want on your eyeballs. I don't care. For me, I think it's a little too much for the day. I rather wear Night Creature all over my lid during the day than like the more iridescent multi-chrome thing on my eyes. That's just me. You're like, what are you talking about? I, it's just my, that's just my opinion. Who am I? <laughs> but anyway, very happy with Nouveau. So I wanted to apply it here on the eyes today 
for the May favorites because it's a great palette and I was happy to pop back into it, you know, just to remember how wonderful it is. And if I had any foam about Cosmos, this will set me straight. Now for lips, I wanted to share two clips because back in my Lisa Eldridge video where I applied the Gloss Embrace in Sorcery for the first time, I did not have the Gloss Embrace in Affair. I was looking for that silly lip gloss, could not find it anywhere. So here I applied the Gloss Embrace in Affair and it does have like a lighter beige brown shade quality about it and here I applied sorcery and between the two I much prefer sorcery. Sorcery is my lip color but with a little more rose but the rose is not reddish it's more like a brown rose and I think it's so beautiful on its own when maybe I don't have any makeup on or I just have some blush on especially like some like sun kiss seduction oh my goodness so i wanted to feature it here in the may favorites because this has been my go-to gloss shade for the majority of the month and a lot for april as well and i also wanted to share this lipstick which i think i had shared before i'm not entirely sure i probably have it is the chanel rouge allure 199 in inattendu <laughs> this shade is like my classic grown and sexy shade. It's like a plummy brown. And when I apply this, I'll apply it right now. It has this elegant quality about this shade. I can't put a finger on it. It just, it just transformed the entire look, right? It made it a little more sophisticated and the smokiness of like this plummy brown, which I feel is Mm. ridiculously like it is ridiculously unique I don't have a shade like this in my collection I have similar shades but 199 is all on its own it stands by itself and it works well with eyeshadow without eyeshadow sometimes I just apply this again with I just have light blush on maybe a little bit of mascara and I just feel grown and sexy like without it being red you know what I mean? Again, the tone is absolutely perfect. I adore this lipstick. And I had to include this in my May favorites because I've been reaching for it this month a lot, just like the Gloss and Brazen Sorcery. And this with Sorcery actually will be beautiful. Why don't we try that out? This actually reminds me of Sorcery in the Velvet lip. You know what I'm saying? But these two together, that's pretty. They complement each other so well. So you got the shine now, but the color still remains. It didn't change that much. It just kind of enhanced what was there. <laughs> what I had on before was Pat's Lust Gloss in Bronze Venus. This is from the Star Wars collab, but I think Bronze Venus is a, a, a permanent shade. And I believe this is Pat's go-to lust gloss because when I was at the Divine Blush Glow Color Bomb event and I saw someone hand her a lip gloss, it looked like this color. And that makes sense because this will look beautiful on Pat. And you just have all the pearl in there. See that? Beautiful on its own. That's what I had on at the top of the video, but I had to put on Chanel and then the gloss embrace because I think this is this is a look, honey. I had to give it up to a product that I featured in my old faves video where I went into the archives of my collection and picked out products that either were no longer available or haven't used in a long time. And this was the Yves Saint Laurent face palette collector, the Street and I. Ooh, this color, again, this peach coral and over Bellini is absolutely perfect. The perfect summer shade that I can't get enough of. And see with my Myco brush how it just beautifully dusts the color on and it does not disrupt what's underneath. It just makes it look so smooth and diffused. Ugh! And having this more coral shade paired with the terracotta hue that happens higher on the cheeks, but then you got the coral in the center. So I've been using the East Saint Laurent a lot because this color is outrageous and perfect for the summertime. And actually, I think it will look beautiful 
with the Color Bomb in Peach Lotus. Oh my goodness. So there will be a lot of combinations for blush this summertime. So that's about it. I'll have new favorites in June's video because that will include for sure the Color Bomb, the Yucca Palette, and I think I'll pull some old favorites. Why not? I, I'm, I probably will still be using the House Slabs and the Danessa uh, face products for sure. I've just been so happy with my collection that every time I hop into it is exciting for me. And I get it, buying new makeup is fun, right? When I received Yucca, it was a great time, it was exciting. But again, I just wanted to be more intentional with my purchases and happy that I was grateful to receive three color bombs from Pat McGrath Labs and I bought Peach Lotus and the Cyber Lotus Bomb Duo Stick and thrilled with those products as well, right? And beyond that, I didn't go too crazy. Now I do have that new shade from the House Labs blush, Lavender Blonde. Lavender Blonde looks like a lot of fun. And I was telling my friend Janelle how I'm like, I really want that shade. I'm telling my friend Pam, I really want that shade. But then I'm looking at the corals now and how beautiful they've been looking, wondering if Lavender Blonde of course it would be, because now I'm thinking of applying that on top of Forbidden Fleur. The plum look, I think, also fitting for summer. It might be more winter appropriate. I get it because of the the hue that, that is not as peachy coral, which is part of the color spectrum that many people associate with summer. I get it. But I also think that could be a summer moment because it's so vibrant, right? Lavender Blonde, just the name itself makes me wanna buy it. I already have a Biscuit's Haze and I was thinking about Pomelo Peach, but I didn't buy it because I really love the Bellini shade from the Danessa line. So I might just get it. I might just get it. Let me know what your favorites have been for May family. I will see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, <laughs> June favorite in August. Or I'll see you during a live on my membership channel. Take care and I will see you again soon.